Two two kg CP. Yeah, let's uh, what's log. So I merged all of the latest updates from you. So Tuesday, environment files. Uh, and and last night. So. Oh, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, I think last night, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we could, we could watch it this one, actually. So here is, is your... This, uh, do you source tree or what is this? Oh, Sublime has it too. Wow, this is pretty yeah, good. Yeah, so they, they recently launched it, Sublime Merge. Oh. So this is like all of your recent updates. I merged them into like staging one mm -hmm. uh, that I'm, I'm trying to deploy from, from this branch. Mm -hmm. And uh, so essentially what, what I'm doing right now is... Hold on. So I'll tell you what happened is when I do Docker, the thing runs, mm -hmm. right? But uh, and the Docker in the so the Docker here also works. Like I've got a Docker a Docker file in in uh, Angular, but have you seen my Docker file? Or, or uh, it, yes, yeah. So in a sense, so here is what I'm trying to do. Like here is we're all focusing on Angular app right now. Angular part of the app. Yeah. And, so. so uh, so that part about uh, using Angular CLI 9.0.5, it's kind of a bit crucial, you know? Um, Which one? That run npm install minus g, yeah, that those Which two one? lines, yeah. That line is important because if you don't, then uh, I don't know what version it will run in because uh, different versions have got different stuff going on. I mean, it might work, mm. right? Uh, right now it is, if you have- Okay, so let's, let's do your way. So environment this, yes. I'm right now doing Server your so I want the, oh, oh, app, oh, oh. the Angular app just to simply pin the local host. So okay. is it the right configuration? Yeah, yeah. Localhost local is where uh, Django is running. Yes. Okay. So let's just do this one. What I'm trying to do yeah, is yeah, like, can, can you change the environment dot prod dot ts2? Say it again, please. There's there's a file called environment dot prod dot ts. Like this one. Yeah. Oh, this the one? Yeah. No, 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 no. Prod.ts. Uh -huh. Anything this to localhost too? So you want here for me to put localhost? Yeah. Localhost. Localhost. Okay. So now let's go build an image for front end. And for that, I need to go. Docker. Build anyone from Hawaii and your front end latest. Uh, okay, now let's try for it to build. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the first time I actually learned and use Docker. I hadn't done Docker before. Yeah. Well, but anyway, like this, everything you did actually, man, like this one, what you mm -hmm. did over here, this is very good. Hold on, where is it? Your Docker file. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that you're using like this as a build stage, and then you do actually another one, it's, you know, this one, mm -hmm. this is actually cool. Let, let us actually make it like first, see if it runs properly, because I haven't checked it. But this is layering mm -hmm. or multiple stage build. This is the proper way to do it. Oh, most, okay, okay. Most of the people just do this one, and then eventually all of this building node modules, they all get packaged in the final image. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, so right now, hold on, let me clean it up a little bit. Okay, so now we're at the stage of installing the Angular, this version. Right, so mm -hmm. it builds, so I mean, it's right now does pre-build scripts in a sense. Now it copies the sources of our app. Mm -hmm. uh, Actually, uh, you know what? Hold uh, on a second. Ah, copy everything into app in the Docker image. Okay, now, so everything, all of this subtree will be an app in, in, in that Docker container. Probably was a good idea to first delete this piece before it was installed and everything. Oh, yeah. So, the, the, so there is some still like optimization in terms of like this build process, but we'll deal with this later. We'll optimize it some other time. Mm -hmm. So when we, right? 
Yeah. So where is this container actually set? It sits in actually var lib like the files or somewhere. Say it again. Like where does the container? Sure. Where those? Where is the container actually built? Where is this folder sitting? It's in a kind of a temporary folder somewhere. Ah, okay. So the way containers work. So we could watch what's going on. So right now, essentially, this is the container. Mm -hmm. You see, like the image is actually now. Let me do it this way. So the. It essentially creates images. So every time you you run through line, it's a new layer for image gets created. So it's just like the structure of Docker. So Docker itself sits into somewhere like maybe War Docker or something. Yeah, actually, yeah I'm looking at that so, mm -hmm. so there is a specific place again. It's like whatever how Docker configured on your system, but it mm -hmm. all sits down in in that regard and like. I mean, I don't want to dive deep into Docker that much, but the idea is that there is Docker environment, right? And it all creates everything. Is, at this point, it's everything is local on your machine. Okay. And oh, yeah. So one thing that I uh, was just, just noticed that uh, I was going, I was, what I was doing is that I was getting into the Angular app, the front end. Oh, that's what I did. I, I did a Docker build there. And then, mm -hmm. like, so I, think I made some changes in the Python side too. So that has to be deployed or built again, like, uh, you know, because uh, the, the, so both have to be, do, uh, there's a web COVID portal. In COVID portal, there's a, the backend is the web. Uh, yeah, the, uh -huh. yeah, so, so this, every time, like both have to be, because sometimes there's changes in both and uh, the current Angular won't work with the old. So this has to be built again, or this has to be deployed. Oh yeah, so here, let, let me show you. The way I'm structuring everything, it's the Docker Compose, yeah, this is uh, what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. That's actually in the root of COVID portal that has these two components. Uh -huh. And uh, the backend is actually getting built this way every time. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so I mean, like, not every time, but when you do Docker Compose and it, it essentially, it, it creates the image if it's, there is like a lot of caching involved with Docker. So mm -hmm. sometimes you need to make sure that, you know, you need to rebuild the image, but otherwise, uh, right now, it, it just goes to Web COVID portal, and since there is a Docker Docker file somewhere here, right? It mm -hmm. will essentially create this. It will take the Python image three, creates mm -hmm. a layer. Where, I mean, like all of this line, it just creates this uh, light layers on top of Python three, and eventually you will have an image with all of the code, you know, in in, in this folder. Yeah. Right, and, and then. What it does in a Docker Compose level, like on this uh, Docker Compose file up, <clears throat> it will simply run within image that it, so it build an image, create like starts a container and then within a container runs this. And since you're exposing the port, mm -hmm. now backend container that will have like whatever name is there, will essentially have this server, backend server running with exposed port 8000. Mm -hmm. uh, now, for front-end, we're doing a slightly different process. We are pre-building this image. Mm. But eventually, we'll do the same thing. It will Every time, we'll just put rebuild it. Uh, but right now, I wanted just to go through this process manually so mm -hmm. that, uh, where was it? Oh, it was here, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially, we do it. And now, what we created is now we have this image that was just created from, from this folder. And now we could simply launch it independently first, mm -hmm. just to see if it's, so we do, I'm doing it so we could uh, get interactive bash shell inside. So we will be inside container. I'm mm -hmm. doing a ramp so we remove the container after, after it stops. But otherwise I'm just simply starting this. Do I have, no, I don't have after complete. Front end, um, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm so simply doing starting it uh, from within. Oh, it doesn't matter where you start from. It's the COVID portal, like that folder that you're, you're just doing a Docker run. So yeah, yeah. This it's already image. It's already portable. I could run it anywhere. That's the yes, whole yes. kind of benefits. Now let me actually open up Docker file again. So we want to check that the nginx in HTML. So in this folder. We have our source code, right? Mm -hmm. 
So we hold on. So we go here, and yeah, indeed, we have our app over here. So now let me let us see. So this is our container that run out of this image, mm -hmm. and it has exposed port eighty. Port eighty. So technically, if we go local host right now, since everything is run on our local host machine, Nginx should already serve our app. No, but wait a second. So I, I saw. Why did you have? Um, I have a question here. So if you do, mm -hmm. um, I saw that um, uh, there in the Docker Compose is 4200. Why did you have that in Docker Compose? Uh, which one? Go to your Docker Compose in the COVID portal. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, here. Why is that port 4200 there? Uh, because like this image that I was using over here was exposing this. No, so, so, so do localhost 4200. Because so that's... This, no, no, no. Okay. First of all, like right now, we don't use this Docker Compose at this point. So it doesn't matter. Uh, I think here's, the, here's, here's what's happening. So uh, uh, localhost, when you that environment file is not for Angular itself. It is what you call uh, uh, Django with, right? I, I think you also understand that. that when you say localhost in, uh, in, in your um, environment file in Angular, it's going to use localhost to call uh, uh, Django, but Docker, it, the Angular itself. Uh, so, so that's uh, is is if you are setting that to localhost, then localhost for Django has to be. Uh, then you have to set like localhost eight eight thousand or something because here it's running in eight thousand, right? So that should be localhost colon eight thousand. Go to yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like this, like right now, like disregard the Django piece. I just want to make oh. sure, like I okay, want to okay. launch an Angular app. Without any backend, but using Nginx. Essentially, I'm trying to port what you did for Nginx mm -hmm. to host Angular app. So forget about this Docker Compose. We don't use it at all at this point. Yeah, the yeah, only thing we use is this is like this Docker file. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, this is what I'm trying to kind of uh, make sure that it actually like runs. So, so do a right click uh, and view source. Uh, do a view source in the in the in the in the thing. So let's see if it's making an Angular call at all. Like if there's some error. Yeah. Like so, okay. so let's let's first uh, we do it this way. So we're launching our image, and now it's supposed to to launch our engine X. Okay. Let us check. So port eight is open, and it's supposed to be Docker entry point, whatever it is there. Hold on, let me check. Does it work like this? Oh, yes. So you see, it's not a Docker entry point and it's Nginx, mm -hmm. whatever you specified there. So mm -hmm. right now, the local host is supposed to work as Nginx. Hmm. Oh, maybe hold on a second. I, I messed up actually. Because we need to, if we launch it in this way, we need to open the port. Oh, you do minus P? Oh, hold on. Let me choose the minus P. So now the local cost 80 is, is mapped to, to 80. Mm -hmm. Now I think it should work. Okay, and it indeed works. Nice. Great. So what? Well, I mean, like the, the Angular app works. Obviously, you see, it tries to yeah. uh, call call something, but we have no nothing on the background. Obviously, it, it, it you know mm -hmm. it doesn't work. But we know that the Angular app works. Yeah, this is working. So, yeah. So now, uh, what do we have? We have an image that points to uh, where is our environment? So it points to local host for that. Uh, to query it, right? Yeah, so, so if you change it to localhost 8000 or something or a different port to call Django, I mean, you can use the same thing because those URLs won't conflict. But uh, yeah, yeah, if that is 8000 and Django runs so on 8000. So we should use this too, and now we need to rebuild the image. So let's in, 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 in both both environment and environment fraud, we just change environment, just change it in both. Well, like There's this. There's also, in the first one. If you do run script build, uh, the environment.ts, yeah. 
So here as well? Yeah. Okay. I have to figure out. I think like the only the prod matters, but it depends on if you do, uh, there's a configuration like which one it picks up, but. Yeah, I see. So 8,000, okay. Yeah. Let's go and rebuild it. Boom. I have too many things to look at. I'm trying to find the, the tab that I was using mm -hmm. for building this. Front end. Docker build. No, oh, hold on. Don't let's not do the <laughs> now. Everything should be much faster. <laughs> uh, you see, it, it, it skipped a lot of stages just because uh, those layers were cached. Mm -hmm. And now, so essentially, it like this rebuild process is uh, really optimized at this point from this perspective. Oh, in the mm -hmm. meantime, uh, let's go to while well, it's building the front end. So, so, so how does Docker work with continuous integration? Like, suppose you have a, you know, you uh, or even if you do it manually, if you do a Git clone, would it automatically uh, just Optimize. Uh, so, in terms of continuous integration, like imagine this: if you ever dealt with any like pipelines that relies on I don't know spinning a virtual machine, doing something within it, etc., now you don't need to do anything of this because you you create an image somewhere, so on the build server, it gets deployed to registry, and now at the point of deployment, essentially you just spun container optimized instance. And then just simply launch containers there. Or for mm. example, you could have a Kubernetes cluster that simply has all of this structure of uh, pods, et cetera. And then you, you use that container there. So in sense, like this continuous integration pipelines, their complexities. Oh, hold on, what happened? We got some errors in build process. No, wait, is it just scroll, scroll, scroll? So everything is okay, not a constructed parameter. No, so this has to do with, because of your, uh, you didn't have the node version or NPM version. That's why like that uh, node version, and without that, those two, it won't work. Uh, I don't know, did you have it? Did okay, you? let's see. So previous time I was using essentially what was previously installed. Now it installed all of the dependency. No, but, but the thing is that, uh, see this, yeah, that node and, you have these two? This is what was used? Yes, it's supposed to be using this one. Because because this same thing works also in my machine, I mean. Mm. Uh, okay, let's, let. it's probably the thing is, again, remember we used cached layers over there? Maybe mm -hmm. they were caching something, something else. Hmm. So let me do this one, what was that, Corona Y? Now let's try to rebuild it again. Hmm, because this is, I'm, I'm quite certain, because I didn't make any change. I know that, that specific uh, one. Mm -hmm. okay. so is it building or it's uh, in the back end? So right now I'm, I'm just like deleting all of the pre cache stuff. Mm -hmm. So let, let's try again. Okay, now it run npm install like from the get go. So let's see if, if this time there will be any issues. Because previously, actually, wow, oh, okay, I kind of see what what was the difference from our previous build process. Previously, we used the node modules folder was already there, and oh. like everything was already installed. But this time. It, it was actually using this node version. Mm. But now, since this time it's now this older probably version of node, 
but no folder of node modules. It install everything from scratch. But you know, since the cached layer was using newer version, I think this is where the our issue kind of came in. Oh, okay, okay. But now I think it should be good. So I mean, anyways, you know, as with any tools, you need to be a little bit aware of the process, and then if you know, if, if you move things around. And then you also have in parallel some cached mm. layers or something. Then it could could kind of run you into troubles like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right now it's almost come to that point where it gave an error last time. Is this typical for Angular app to compile so long, or is it because there are like lots of dependencies? <laughs> it's, it's, Angular is like uh, not. I mean, React is half the size, you know, Angular is one gigabyte uh, React is, and yeah, it takes time for uh, the more dependencies and stuff of this thing they, they have. There's this huge node models folder, it's a gigabyte almost. I mean, it's, uh, Google didn't do a good job of it. Uh, and they had like so many versions, each version was different, like it's maddening. So I didn't choose React to start with because Angular has its advantages, but hmm, it comes with this uh, slightly it's more difficult framework, uh, I should say, because they had nine, they had eight versions within two years. I mean, that's ridiculous. And they, these versions were different. Like you try to do something, they have these packages and these package, each package depends on like 50 other packages and they depend on 50 other packages. So that versioning is crazy. Yeah. Okay. By the way, check out this observation. So this is like COVID portal. And you see the size of the folders are actually small because all of the building are damn it again the same thing. Holy shit, like you think in this school? Uh, okay, I think I know the answer. Uh, so can you do one thing? Can yeah. you, there's, a, there's a package lock that package lock.json and node models. Are those two folders deleted? Can you delete those two folders? Or that's not material, right? It's in Docker. So uh, there, there are two folders that there, that there, there is a that node module because just delete that node module. It, it's oh, so you're saying like this folder because it's in the yeah, in this package of this file has to be deleted because this file can somehow cache and create a problem. Okay, and, and now, then, not, yes, I, I I totally get what you're saying. It says I, I think that you're, you're totally correct here. So is the node module deleted? The node module is being built, right? Yes, but again, it takes if package lock is there, right? It recreates what was in package lock, and package lock file was created like in my local machine, not in the uh, in the container. And they get caught it. Mm, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because package lock is not cracked. Okay, so that's what it was because it was using package yeah. lock. Yeah, I forget about this nuance as well. That's what again, I kind of hate this uh, node world because idea of, of you know running out of the back end it's actually um, i think it's amazing but then since this dependency hell coming to back end that was typically used and managed by you know like sys admins like linux world when they were like always really robust way of how you do uh, back end dependencies but now mm -hmm. you have the same type i mean it's just different philosophies clashed into one and now you can run this stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you ride a motorcycle? Your face is in that helmet, like in your image? No, oh. I was I, I was doing like time attacks in the car. I'm not crazy. No motorcycles. Oh. Go karts. I had a motorcycle when I was in California. Uh, what type? It was a simple Kawasaki 550. But uh, it was good enough. Uh, the thing is that, you know, those motorcycles above 90 miles, like it starts uh, fishtailing a bit, like uh, the air sort of lifts uh -huh. it. And the other big problem is that uh, motorcycles, unless you have like a 750 or 1000 CC, um, if you come to a stoplight, uh, it, it's not going to trigger the light. The pressure isn't good enough. So you can wait. For oh, I, I see. I see. I see. Like those like circles on the back. Um, yeah, because, uh, you know, for uh, if you take a left turn, uh, you have to wait for the signal to change and it will never change. So you'll have to break yeah, yes. the light. Mm, I, I imagine the pain for this. 
So mm-hmm. were you like just driving it, like commuting to work or something, just to get split lanes, and, or you were actually enjoying some back roads? Because I like <laughs> twisty roads a lot in California. Yeah, I mean, I used to go and take it on, uh, I used to go up um, 92 and go come down 84 or like that, you know, like uh, I was living in the East Bay, so I used to go to the beach just for fun. I mean, I had, uh, that was my, my vehicle too, because I had a car and then I sold it. Um, and it's, uh, you know, California, you can ride it all weather. It's not like in Chicago, you can't. I was going to Chicago when uh, basically the day before I was going to leave, I had an accident and it kind of smashed the bike. Mm. But, but uh, I mean, like, that was my fault, too. Like, I was doing my same thing. I used to, like, I had masters that rode a bit, you know, that 84. 84, you know, is, is a lot of turns, right? Uh, 84? Mm-hmm. To 8? I don't know which road is 84. Uh, I'll tell yeah. you, but yeah, let's, let's look at this. The same thing happened again. Oh, goodness. But I... Okay, can you just scroll once? Let's see. Yes. NG2 charts. Okay. So I have one thought. There's one more file. Can you go to this? Um, uh, uh, can you go to, uh, open up the tangle? Uh, yeah. We'll go to tsconfig.json. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is somehow. Let me check my. So the question is do we use this module? Which one is it? Oh, that one. Yes. And NG2 Charts is, uh, let me see, are we using it? May or may not. That Actually, we are not. So we can just try deleting it. Because NG2 Let's... Charts, I'm not using, I'm not creating any graph, right? You're right. Yeah, we can just delete it. Just just get rid of it. Because Will that it one work if I comment out or no? I've forgotten. Thank yeah, you yeah, comment out is fine. That, 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 that should be fine. Yeah. Because you know what happened with Angular is that another thing is that Google never oh, came, uh, came to it. No, delete it just. Do we need a file upload? Let's del- let's clean up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. File upload we don't need. We don't need. Uh, slider file we need. Button. We are using a slider. Accordion. Uh, I don't think we need accordion either. Uh, we don't need color picker. Yeah, we don't need color picker. We don't need progress bar. But the thing is that I have to make sure, like, uh, all my, uh, I'm not importing them. So maybe that's another thing because I have some, some, this is all. I, I, I think you're doing everything fine because the image that it creates, it's not that big. So it's just basically Nginx and some basic stuff. So I think it's, there are not like this huge dependency. Just for building, we, we could also, like, kind of, yeah, no, no. What happened is that uh, you know I used uh, I have got I've got other projects in Angular for my work and everything, so I just use a template and that template I was using all of this stuff. So even if I'm not using it, I might have it as an import. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't have it as an import. Then it's a missing import. Then I have to go and fix the code and take it out. You know, just like uh, extra import that I that is no longer needed, but I left it because it was compiling. But anyway, let's see. Yeah, this this was this is the I think I showed you like with my brain viewer image uh, that that's the same kind of uh, you know just like folder structure. But, so, okay, so oh, npm install works nicely, right? So now, now 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 comes the part, right? Now it is now it okay, is doing Angular. That. So Angular installation that would fail. Yeah, so Angular CLI. There's an Angular CLI file. Oh, the NPM okay, board. so now building, building. Now the question is, will it build? Mm-hmm. Yeah, here, here it was giving a problem earlier, right? Let's see. Yeah, they should have a better way of doing this. I, I mean, uh, I think like. Uh, I don't know. Google definitely didn't do a good job with this. Facebook is doing a much better stuff with React. I just choose the. So in the meantime, while building, let's check that the the backend works. So correct portal backend port eight thousand. Let's see if I have everything set up properly because I remember like that data was missing here and there. 
Yeah. How do I check that? What show alignment? Right? I just see uh, uh, show alignment. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I have an M here, right? So I need that, to... That's okay because uh, there's something or the other that will fail inside, but I think like it works. As so long I remember as... like there was, oh, okay, so SQL like this file is here. Yeah. But do I need to, to use the one that you sent me on Slack? Remember last time? No, 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 no. I updated it. So this is the right one. I, I, I yeah, removed, uh, like it wasn't get ignored, but I changed it because uh, I told Nick, like, you know, we need to have it there. So it's, it's a part of Git now. Now I'm actually talking to him on Friday at four. Right. Yeah, he it's wants good. to uh, show it. Yeah. I don't know if you read that news today in Nature, like I was looking at uh, basically. So about seven megabytes, it's okay, right? This is about the right? Oh, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's correct. Okay. This is the so, right one. Yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, MG charts. What the? F okay. So there are oh, different. Right, so I have charts. all of these uh, things. Like, I, I, I can, I can remove it. Because I told you, like, I might be having this somewhere. Okay, so so I, I know. Think, what, you know what? Just, just delete that one thing. Like, just delete that one thing. Leave the other ones alone. Uh, I, I know. Like, I should, I should go and fix, optimize my. I can do it right now, though. NG two files charts. So, hold on. Let, let's do it this way. Let's just, put just leave everything that. back. Just accept that one. Yeah, yeah, not this one. This one is not needed. I, I'm not doing an import of this. Is it there? Like, was it? Did it show up in there? I don't think so. So here, here is. Let me. I know oh, what it is, there, it is I, there. I need from you. Yeah. So let's for, let's forget about this Docker file for a yeah. second. Uh -huh. I will make it work. I mean, like, we'll make it work some other time. Yeah. Uh, what I will so do right now, what I want to do is instead of doing this step. Mm -hmm. No, hold on, not this one. I'm in the wrong, sorry. Uh, so I, do, I want to do this building step without containers simply on my machine. It's just a npm start. Yeah, so I'm doing npm install, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's supposed to install everything that, that we the, need. The, the surprising thing is that the why does npm i work and not this is would be a curious thing because you have a certain node version in your machine now it's no longer yeah. using the docker version so you work uh, you work for some company like uh, for offline like uh, i mean from home remotely is that your kind of work no no i'm a, I'm a machine learning guy it's just like i do all of this type of stuff usually for the project etc so this is my version of N, uh, npm and node. Everything is wow. Really you got a later version too. So maybe so, you can use these. Uh, so so the thing with uh, that ang uh, so the so the Angular CLI like uh, there's a way to see because uh, I don't know if I have Angular because Angular CLI that nine point zero point five was a key one. I mean we can do a older thing, but let's. So this is what, like, let's see, will the build process work on everything that is whatever latest that it pulls from from now, from npm.com? Mm. Because maybe, you know, like what could happen there is some mix of versions that get locked down in, in a package JSON and then in, again, package local on your local machine or something. And this is where the mismatch happens. So probably the best way to do it is, let's say, for example, like if right now the build doesn't fail, then that package lock, just commit it, and mm -hmm. then use that one or something. I forgot actually like how this whole ecosystem, like I mean, like this uh, tips and tricks, how to make sure that your environment is portable. Yeah, but no, no, this time it's working, Lexi. It, it went past all of that. Yeah, I think uh, so. It's definitely it is. some mismatch of versions that that would. Uh, okay, some yeah. other thing. What NGS has failed? Okay. Can you just go back? Is it the same one? Again, those NGM charts again. 
ng2 charts yeah so so you know what i will do is that i will remove ng2 charts and the import and the color picker and all of this so let me work on that and i will mm -hmm. uh, send you a slack when i'm done uh, okay and uh, you know that'll be soon but you know i guess like uh, you know whenever you okay. can then let, let's uh, let me fully confirm that the back end works so when i'm doing this i'm spawning the back end so when i see this just essentially empty yeah i don't know if that is, is it okay or no let me try it in my back end let's just oh what happened oh, okay let, let's just see if i have it that be um Yeah, um, that's correct. Like what you're seeing, because what's happening is that I have a, I have a, yeah. If, if you don't call it from Angular, like it won't work. So, so it, it's it's it, 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 this is correct. Like I think the Django is working fine, but let me mm. have to take out this um, ng2 charts now. <sighs> okay, I'll do that. I'll do that right away, and I'll clean up everything in package.json that is no longer needed. Uh, you know, I had all this redundant stuff. But I'm going to do it right away. So actually, you know what? Let's let's try another thing. Is uh, yeah. which version of Node do we need to have locally? Thirteen, fourteen. So, so there are actually three things. There's the Node version, NPM version, but most importantly, that Angular version is what's screwing us up. You know, Angular version mm -hmm. has to be that nine point zero point five. Or, <clears throat> but there is there in Docker. So I'm surprised because if it's in Docker, then it shouldn't be an issue. I mean. If I let me just see, if I just do ng version in my machine, like what shows up? Because obviously it's working in my machine. Um, so Angular should be what nine oh five. Yeah. So so the way you can do it, you can say like ng version, ng version. If you just say type in ng version from your command line, ng space version. Hold on. So there's Angular. So it should be what? It should be npm run. No, 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 ng, ng space version. No, 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 just ng space version. Like I don't have global global installation of ng. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to I have it. only I have only local. So local is six fourteen four. Yeah. So that but it should be nine oh five, right? Yeah, because you see, it is there in my uh, the well that what you're seeing that six fourteen four is your node version. Or npm version. So there's a npm version, there's a node version, and then there is the Angular CLI version. So there's a file called Angular CLI dot JSON. Can you just open that? It is okay. that so these are three files that are kind of important. There's a ts uh, ts config, and there's an Angular CLI, which is in a COVID portal app as Angular CLI dot JSON. Mm. Oh, this one. Yeah. So does that have a version somewhere? Because that has some stuff. Um, but actually, let me just see. Uh, I don't see any versions over here. It's probably installed like the latest one. Uh, yeah, they, 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 yeah, it doesn't, I don't think that has a version, but but if you want, like I, I just found out like where I have all these imports of ng2 charts. I'm going, I'm deleting, deleting it right now. So um this can do that. Oh, hold on a second. This 6144, it's not Angular, it was NPM version. 
Yeah. Hold on. Let, let's let's. I'm installing right now. So I'm using 1313 NP uh, mode version. I'm installing from our package that JSON. And now let's see. NG will it type? No, it's supposed to be like node modules. NG. Oh, probably not NG. It will be Angular. I did a I did a change. I, I uh, removed all of that stuff. If I did a get add dot get. P. I'm just building on my end, like after you move the imports to see that so, uh, it was right. Sure. Right. So, like, do you know what's the name of the package for and no for Angular? Oh, it's at Angular. Oh, I see. So this is where it is. Okay, now it makes sense. And I go to CLI, I guess. No, bin. Like this version. Okay, here's uh, the, the local, you see, if I'm doing NPM install, so this is what we got. Angular CLI 905 node 1313. Everything should be good, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I and I've just like uh, I'm committing a version. Um, with the push. I just committed a version. I removed the ng to charts and color picker. So now it should uh, if you want to do a build with that, it should also work. Actually, you know what? Let's do what? Run dev. Let's develop a. Oh, what was that? Man? NPM. Ah, where is this package? This oh, start. Let's just see if developer environment will, will come up. Because before I never had issues actually to to bringing up the developer the mm -hmm. development environment. Mm -hmm. It's what they were like this building stuff. Actually, build was actually working for me as well. It just there was always some some reason for pointing out to properly point to the back end, and through engine X wrapper essentially that was kind of was uh, preventing me to to launch everything properly on on the server. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually, you see, like Angular takes, it's actually right now it's not that bad, but usually it was taking all of my six cores on my machine to like to the maximum. Wow. You see right now it uses two. <laughs> now yeah. three, four, so it kind of gets it more and more, you see? Oh, there is another core available. Let's use it. You see, fully like fully occupied machine. Um, but I think it's it's great actually that it's done everything automatically. And... Okay, we close by. What the f is happening again? So I guess something. Yeah, if you do the latest get, it should work. The latest what? If you do a, a get, because I just pushed something, I remove oh, those okay. reports. So now uh, I remove the ng2 charts and color picker. So now it should work. Fetch. So this one, right? Yeah, I, I just mm -hmm. remove those two. Yeah. Yes. Obviously, I haven't purged it. Uh, stage. 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 Uh, we could ignore all of this. Okay.
Listen. And what else? Okay, my okay. Now, <sighs> okay. What do we want to do? We want to build. Package lock. What are the other projects that are running in the Konova infrastructure right now? That is the literature portal is running. Huh? Hold on, my. Now I can hear you. I should wonder, will it do the same thing in Docker? Yes, in Docker as well. Okay, build. Let's build. Let's mm -hmm. build. No, now is the coming of the part, right? Now is the part it was giving a problem earlier, but now we have removed that two of the troubling ones. Let me see that. Yeah, local host, local host. So the pro TS used when you do build, right? And environment TS when you use uh, ng serve. Correct. Okay. Right, yeah. And now, like, why are there like two API and server here? Oh, oh, wait a second. I, we didn't take it out from the uh, package.json. Sorry, my mistake. I should have removed from package.json, but I didn't. Mm. Mm. Mistake, mistake, mistake. So it will fail again because I didn't take it from, from package.json. I just removed the imports. Oh. Can you stop it now? No, it just works. I mean, it's it just... Fail because package.json it has it. I have uh, removed it from the code, but I you didn't forgot from our package or this and... Oh, well, I mean, like, it finishes. if it installs it, it's not a problem, right? It's just like the dependency later on. This no, the package we will be building. This is where we have problems. No, no, no. The package or this has to be corrected. So, oh. I just removed it from package.json now. It's, it's, I overlooked it. Mm. Did you push it to the repo? Yeah, just... Uh... Oh, okay, this one. The local thing is falling fast will do everything by checkout. I don't need to check out. I just need. I want to fetch. Okay, here I'm pushing it. Just give me a second. Um, 
part. Yeah, I, I just fixed it and uh, push. Okay, so let me first push it. This one, yeah. package or JSON, yeah. So now this one. Mm, yeah. Now it won't, now it's that ng to chart. No, let me just build from this version because everything should be okay, right? Yeah, remove the package. Yeah, remove package lock to JSON and build it. Um, oh, oh, wait, yeah, yeah, this has to be changed too, yeah. Maybe I, I will not track these. I will stop GitHub uh, like to put these on Git ignore so that uh, these these don't, don't get. Don't touch on your end. You just again, we're doing this locally on my end, uh -huh. so it's not a problem. So boom, this one and this one as well. Local force. So it should be good. Mm -hmm. Docker file. Yes, we haven't changed anything here. No, no modules, no extra bullshit. Package log. Do we need to have package log here? Uh, no, you can actually delete it's package log. Or package just delete package log. Okay, no charts, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. This time it's got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. <laughs> so much. So they, that's why Angular, uh, like every time I try to do it in another machine, there's some problem or the other. It's so frustrating with Angular. Even with Docker, it shouldn't have given a problem. This is... Well, there is, again, like right now, we don't actually use Docker yet, right? This yeah, not right now. But, yeah. The moment when we kind of pass through the stage and then you'll kind of see how the clean workflow with docker works mm, you'll yeah. kind of see like oh that's why i had all of these issues because there was a mix of my local configuration for this npm version over there not actually using the correct i mean like we'll figure it out and then yeah. you'll have a really nice workflow and mm -hmm. because all of this i think is right i mean like the moment like the building process described in this document is simply not working. And on your local machine, because there are some of the pieces get overwritten by your local environment that make it to work. Mm. So that, that's, that's why we, we run into issues. Mm -hmm. no? And I was also thinking that, uh, do you think the COVID portal front end should be in a folder inside the Django or to put in the same NGINX? Otherwise, we have to, uh, because Django is right now not running in Nginx. So suppose I wanted to do Nginx for Django. Uh, I mean, then uh, would I need to move, move COVID portal in? Uh, because but, No, I, I see, I see what, 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 what you mean. But I don't think you need to have an Nginx for our setup because we use traffic as a reverse proxy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. let me actually quickly tell you, um, oh, I need to be on another branch. Mm. So you know what? Let's do it this way. I think I should have a a different version of it. Yes. So let me kind of tell you, like briefly, like the whole idea behind our setup. So we have this section, reverse mm. proxy. It's all handled by traffic, which is <laughs> it's the same thing as nginx, as Apache, yada yada. It's a reverse proxy piece. And it just configuration for it. And the whole idea is that there is entry point web port 80. Mm -hmm. And then when you launch backend this service, which in our case, here is a pre-built COVID portal backend, but this is, this is essentially our, uh, this is what we built in web COVID portal based on that Docker image. And since it, it essentially spans the server on port 800 of this backend, what it does is traffic 
here it looks like providers docker it looks for any other docker container with proper set of labels hence why mm -hmm. we have these labels over here so it will find traffic enabled true so now the traffic this reverse proxy knows that i need to take this container and hook it up somewhere and it mm -hmm. looks for this rule Okay. Oh, there is portal DB, and this is specified whatever. Let's say in our case, it'll be local host. It mm -hmm. will know like, oh, you know, for this uh, domain name, I need to put like that comes to port 80. I need to route it to this backend. And it searches mm -hmm. for essentially one port that is exposed in our case, 8,000. Boom, okay. done. Your backend is already exposed on port 80 under this local host, like under this host name, this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Now your front end acts this, exactly the same way. Traffic sees, oh, traffic enable. Oh, I need to expose this uh, service. Mm -hmm. And it also looks for, okay, which host name it will be here. So everything that comes from the port 80 over here, it will root with, with this header for this domain name. It will root to this front end and it searches for the one exposed port. If you have multiple ports exposed here, you will need to specify it. Like, let me show you a more complex example. Uh, where is our kernel infrastructure? So here we have, again, as, as you see, reverse proxy. Uh -huh. uh, and then everything else is just a separate something. For example, API was built using, uh, I actually have no idea how it was built. Uh, because it's, you know, like it will be folder API it mm -hmm. builds image over there so you can have angle whatever is there like i don't care from the docker perspective i don't care i just know that the image will get built in this folder there is a docker file for it and then i will expose it to traffic and i will expose it under this domain name mm, okay but, but i mean what i definitely know that this image will have only one port exposed etc Mm -hmm. Let's look at some more complex, something like, uh, I don't know, something that has dependencies. Do you have anything like this? Unfortunately, I don't. Um... There's something. Oh, here, here's an example, OCR. Mm -hmm. you take this image, run it, tells traffic to expose it. Then it tells it OCR under this domain name. We will point out to this OCR container. And for OCR, we also specify that traffic load balancer will get to the point 5,000 out of OCR because probably this image has multiple ports exposed. So traffic needs to know which exact port to hook up to entry point that we defined over here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will tell you more. It's just right now, just a quick overview for you just to kind of get this just high level idea. Don't go really into details because this Docker Compose is actually not, not the latest version. There are some details that actually make it hard to understand. Um, mm. Yeah, again, something is wrong in gbuild. Let me try. Mm -hmm. File upload. Oh, shh. <sighs> Never feel that I mean, that's Let me see. I think we'll get right now when the package log will get generated. Mm. Let's check the differences. So check this out. Like if you look at my screen right now. Yeah. So these are the differences between package lock, JSON, between I just generated it and the one that was there. So Babel got updated a little bit. What's it? So everything related to Babel. You know, <laughs> I, uh, let's see. Like I just do a build on my end to know that I 
Uh-huh. Yeah, try it out as well. Uh, in, uh, uh, run. Because what happens, I did a start and that worked. And this stupid thing, like sometimes it, it, if you do a run script build, it does something else compared to a start. But mm -hmm. now I'm a run script build to make sure it works. In, and I removed that, that entire thing. It was just redundant. Um, Actually, you know what? There are plenty of packages have uh, major, major upgrades. Uh, plenty of? Yeah, there is actually some uh, uh, some cleanup that I had needed to do, which I hadn't done, but uh, now I'm doing it, um, sort of because now I need to. I initially had uh, some other stuff I had like, okay. Mm. Okay, actually, I, I have a important call in like five minutes that I need to get okay. ready. But I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you, uh, I, I think like I, I'll make sure the run script build works on my end. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do so make sure that you can run it from like you know clean slate like essentially new fold like not the new folder but like no node modules no package lock all of that stuff and uh -huh. then uh push the the difference on my end and i actually get what i wanted to get from you in, in terms of where to properly specify local host ports etc to hook up front end and back end uh i think i definitely got the idea how to run it on the nginx that you did so all of that like updates from last time we we, we spoke i think I, I got a good understanding so now let's just do this fixes yeah. and like really like one small step left for us to deploy everything yeah and then um, we'll have another session i will tell you everything in terms of how uh, all of my like my engineering choices were to hack everything up and then we will give the whole pipeline and to end you will we'll know all of the details sounds yeah. good yeah sounds good so by the way i this time I, I did a clean build i removed everything and this time it works i'd like this time i'm sure it won't fail but i know you have to go uh, but uh, okay. I, will, I will check again and then definitely like let's do this again and um, by the time uh, i want to tomorrow like are you available tomorrow about the same time yeah yeah tomorrow fine same okay time. let's let's chat like uh, pin each other like around 1 p.m. my time what is it, like 4 p.m. for you uh, and then figure out and do the same workstation and, and, and push it through okay awesome yeah talk to you later uh -huh. yeah thank you so much